Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. Well, today's second video takes us around the 30th of August. We are very rapidly running down the clock on August and also on the summer of uh, 2019, at least meteorologically speaking. Um, so uh, we're getting to the very end of August now with week 10 day video updates. And of course, we can extend out beyond that. We extended GFS and ESA ensembles over to around a couple of weeks that will get us into the beginning of uh, September uh, and of course have a look at 7 uh, as well um, for uh, the next month so that takes us well into uh, into the middle of September so a bit of a look ahead and hope you find it interesting and informative just to say that the first video today was the uh, ECMDF 30 day look ahead that's looking at the weather for the UK and the rest of Europe too for the next uh, four weeks so do have a look at that and uh, see what's going on. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to give a couple of shout-outs. Uh, one, to our latest uh, PayPal donor. So I've got to say a big thank you to Stephen Buckley, who has given us a donation through PayPal. Big, big thank you to Stephen uh, Buckley for becoming uh, a PayPal donor uh, for Gazworthy. Thanks so much, Stephen, uh, for doing that. And I've also... I've got to give a mention to our latest patron, uh, who is uh, Dave Shooter. So Dave Shooter has become our 65th patron. And a big, big thank you to Dave for doing that. Thanks so much, Dave, for becoming our uh, our 65th patron. Uh, Dave um, runs OsoLiving.com. I can take you through to their website. This is the website of Oso Living. Uh, you can find them at the barn at Nutbourne in West Sussex. Oso Living specialise in wood-burning stoves out for other outdoor ovens, barbecues, and cookware. So, uh, and it's Scandinavian living and entertainment. So thank you so much, uh, Dave Shooter, for becoming our 65th patron uh, from Oso oh Living. Do uh, have a look at uh, Oso oh Living's uh, website. I'll leave the description uh, in the, I'll leave the link in the description at uh, YouTube. Have a look at that. See uh, what, what they're doing. And uh, yeah, big thank you to uh, today for becoming our uh, latest patron. And a big thank you as well to Stephen uh, Buckley also for becoming our uh, latest PayPal donor. If you would like to uh, become a PayPal donor of Gas Service, all you need to do is come to Gas Service PayPal.me page, sign into your PayPal account, and uh, you can give a donation to Gas Service as much as you want. Uh, and that is absolutely fine. You're going to shout out in the videos and say thank you so much for doing that. And also, of course, there's Patreon. So if you'd like to become a patron of Gas Service, uh, and uh, we'd only get 70 patrons by Christmas, not sure we'll be able to do that, but it would be nice if we could get 70 patrons by Christmas, but if you would like to become a, um, a patron, Gas Service, just come to the Gas Service Patreon page. You uh, sign up for a Patreon account, assuming you don't already have one, and then give an ongoing monthly donation to Gas Service from anything from $1 a month upwards. Whether you do it through PayPal or Patreon, you'll get a mention in the we'll give you a shout out, say thank you very much. And we can, of course, include your uh, website, uh, business, uh, business website, all of that kind of thing. As uh, we've done just here with OsoLiving.com. Uh, so, uh, again, that's all you have to do uh, if you would like to uh, get a mention in videos. One or two people have chosen to stay anonymous. That's absolutely fine. Just leave a little message with your donation to tell us you would rather not get a shout out. And uh, that is going to be absolutely fine. That's what you want to do. So, a big thank you to our PayPal donors. Big thank you to our patrons. Special thank you to uh, Stephen Buckley and also to Dave Shooter. Thanks so much, guys, uh, for doing that. Right, let's get on video then. I'm going to start off by having a look at the central England temperature. So, we are currently sitting provisionally uh, with the CD from Hadley at 17 Point one. That's an anomaly of 1.1 degrees above average. It's provisional to uh, yesterday, to the 19th of August. Now, that may tick down a little bit more. So in the next day or so, that might go just under 17 degrees. However, we are now focusing on some pretty warm weather coming up over the bank holiday weekend and possibly lasting 
into the early part of next week. That will probably give the CET a bit of a boost uh, again. Now, the warmest month of this summer uh, so far, of course, is July at 17.5 with the CET. I don't think we're going to beat that 17.5. Uh, for July, but it might be quite a close run thing in the end, actually, and it is possible now that both July and August are going to come in with CETs above 17 degrees, which would tell us that we have had uh, really quite a warm summer. Now, on the Gavsworth uh summer forecast, we was predicting that August would be the hottest month of the summer, and we did go for that rather, um, rather sort of uh, bold and uh, rather uh, unlikely um, forecast that uh, July may be the hottest, um, or I should say, may be the hottest month since August 2003, uh, 16 years ago. We're not going to be able to achieve that. These past 10 days or so uh, have stopped that from occurring. But let's have a look at the CTs for August. Um, this CT page at uh, Gaswell. So this is the August column uh, just here. Now, the last time we had an 18 Celsius CT August was back in 2003, uh, just here, which had a CT of 18.3. That was our last really hot and dry uh, August. Now, we're not going to be able to get uh, 18 Celsius with this um with the CT for this August. So that's off the table. Uh, we did say, it, though, it could be the warmest August for 16 years. We don't necessarily have to get to 18 Celsius to achieve that. What we have to do to achieve that is beat the CT that we had the following year in 2004. That's this year just here. August 2004 had a CT of 17.6. So if we got to 17.6, we would um, be able to say that we have had the warmest August uh, for 15 years. Uh, I hope to follow this. If we beat 2004, actually we would be able to say that we have had the warmest August for 16 years since 2003. And to do that, we would need to get to 17.7. Uh, what we also see through these August since 2003, 2004 is that most of them have been uh, in the 16. So we have 2005, that's 16.2, uh, that one at 16.1, that one at 15.4, that one at 16.2, that one at 16.6, that one at 15.3, that one at 15.4, that one at 16.6, 2013 at 16.9, nearly got to 17, but not quite. Uh, 2014 at 14.9, at very cool. 2015 at 15.9. That's an interesting one. That's 2016 at 17.0. I'll come back to that in a moment. And then 2017 at 15.6 and 2018 at 16.6. So um, if we have a CT above 17, and this is achievable actually. So if we have a CT of 17.1, or more, then we will actually have had our warmest August, because we'll beat 2016, uh, and we'll have had our warmest August since 2004. So we'll have had our warmest August for, um, for um, what would it be, 15 years, wouldn't it? If we was to get above 17.6, or if we was to get to 17 Point seven, which I don't think is achievable, I don't think you're going to be able to do that, then it will be the warmest August since 2003. So I think that's off. But I do think there's a chance we could beat the 17.0 that we achieved in August 2016, just there. And if we do, that will mean we'll have had our warmest August since 2004. So this is turning into quite a, quite a warm August, actually. It's not quite as hot as we said in the summer forecast. But I don't think it'll be too far away from that prediction of the warmest August for 16 years. I'm anticipating it will be the warmest August for 15 uh, years because I do think it's achievable that we could beat the 17.0 that we recorded in August 2016. That's based on the latest uh, data. So let's have a look at that then. So um, these are the GFS upper air and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So London today, the red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off still a little bit cooler than average at the moment. 
with the upper air temperatures. But really, from this point on, uh, temperatures are lifting up. So the trend is quite clearly upwards. As we get into the final week of August, that's this period just here, dates on the bottom of the chart, of course, we are significantly above average and it looks like we've firmed up now that we're going to have several days of really quite warm weather we're going up to around 15 celsius at 850 hpa that's probably going to be enough to get us to around 30 degrees actually by uh by saturday sunday uh in central parts of london so 30 degrees is 86 fahrenheit so for around three four days over the weekend in start next week and this of course includes the bank holiday weekend as well over that period it looks like it's going to turn very warm now as we get through to the very end of august into the first week of september that period just here clearly we've got a cooling trend not all ensemble members are cooling things off some of them are staying quite warm but generally the trend is down so it looks like by month's end and into the start of uh september we are likely to see temperatures becoming cooler and possibly just seem to get going a little bit more unsettled then as well there are some precipitation spikes here in the opening days of september but of course that is a really long way off and it's in the unreliable time frame of the gfs and it's ensemble Temperature anomalies from the 20th to the 28th of August coming out warmer than average. Pretty much all parts of Europe, actually. Most places forecast have above average temperature anomalies. Uh, the UK is included in that, particularly so for England and Wales. And dry as well, very dry uh, anomalies from the 20th to 28th of August for England and Wales in particular. It does look a little bit more unsettled for West of Scotland, but obviously, clearly, we have very much firmed up are now on a warm and dry period in the next week or so. So let's have a look at those all important generic charts. This is the GFS operational run for Friday. And high pressure is taking over from the south. Big area of high pressure bringing dry and very warm weather to England Wales. Still looks a little bit unsettled for Scotland and for Northern Ireland too into saturday and sunday high pressure is more or less in control we have got this little area of low pressure down here let's just change the color we've got this little area of low pressure down here across northern parts of france that could threaten some thundery showers to southern parts of the country but overall looks like high pressure will be dominating bring lots of dry and potentially very warm or even locally hot where we're going to get to 30 degrees somewhere like the middle of london on a sunday afternoon that would be enough to say it's hot that's 86 fahrenheit now unlike what models were showing yesterday when it looked like we're going to see a quick end to this high pressure period now looks as though this high continues uh, through the rest of the bank holiday weekend so that's monday that's bank holiday monday high pressure ridging through the country from the azores over to central and northern parts of europe that will keep the dry and very warm conditions uh going even into tuesday next week we still have this ridge with us so this is looking like quite a prolonged spell of dry and warm weather that we're setting up now and that's why i'm saying that i think there is a chance that we could have our warmest august since 2004 well, totally rule out warmest August since 2003. We're not getting 18 Celsius CT month, though, uh, I don't think. But all lies, of course, will be on the CT when we get through to the end of month. There's the upper air temperatures for Tuesday. Uh, and they do look very warm, potentially quite hot down across southern parts of uh, the country. We go into the middle of next week and then things start to turn more unsettled. So this is uh, Wednesday got low pressure on Wednesday developing across northern parts of France in towards the Bay of Biscay and then on Thursday that low trundles north that could be thundery that could be bringing thunderstorms through the middle part of next week and also bringing an end to the dry and warm slash locally hot spell of weather that's how things look at day 10, which is Friday the 30th of August. And by then, we've gone into, obviously, a much, much cooler and much more unsettled spell of weather. Low pressure is sitting across the northern parts of Scotland. We're pulling in the winds from the North Atlantic. So we're back to cool and unsettled conditions as we get through to the final couple of days of the month. 
beyond day 10 into the first week of August, rather than, uh, the first week of September, I should say, rather unsettled with low pressure beginning to head in from off the Atlantic. It looks like the first week of September could be a little bit on the autumnal side with low pressure bringing showers or longer spells of rain and fairly cool temperatures likely as well, I would have thought. As the GM, again, the high pressure is bridging into the south on Friday, bringing loads of dry and increasingly warm weather. Highs in control through Saturday. Sunday, a little bit more with that uh, trough of low pressure than what the GFS is making of it. So that could bring a risk to some thunderstorms, maybe, on Sunday before the low sort of gets out of the way Monday to Tuesday and the ridge comes back, especially so for England and Wales. So that would bring dry and very warm weather back after maybe a thundery interlude on Sunday up to the northwest looks a little bit more unsettled and changeable up there up towards day 10 again high pressure is uh, maintained very close to us just sitting a little bit to our west starting to pull down some slightly cooler air into the north and northeastern part of the country but otherwise a fair amount of dry and warm weather I would have thought with that right way up to the end of next week ECMWF shows the ridge building into the south on Friday. Northern parts of the country look a little bit more unsettled and showery. Into the weekend, and again, loads of dry and very warm weather too. That's that little trough of low pressure on Sunday. That might bring with some thunderstorms to more southern and potentially southwestern parts of the country. Otherwise, Sunday looks like a very warm and dry day and then the high pressure sort of extends through the country for bank holiday monday so that brings us a chance of a classic bank holiday monday loads of dry weather plenty of sunshine and temperatures could be really warm as well ecm into next week then keeps that high pressure with us so uh that's going nowhere fast as we go through to middle of next week that maintains dry and potentially very warm uh, weather with it, temperatures mid to upper 20 Celsius. You would have thought that's how we finish up by day 10, which is Friday the 30th of August, still under high pressure. It is inching up towards the northwest, so we're beginning to pull in some slightly cooler air from the northeast. As the upper air temperatures shown, we're starting to draw in some slightly cooler air from the northeast. But even then, down in the south in particular, there will be lots of dry and warm weather on offer. So, all of a sudden, we have definitely firmed up on the chance of quite a prolonged spell of dry and warm conditions, maybe very warm to locally hot at times in the southeast uh, over the next week to 10 days or so. These are the options that we've got on the table within the ECM ensembles today at day 10, which of course is the 30th of August. This is from the Icelandic Met Office. So we have 15 members of the ECM ensembles with above average heights in the Atlantic and going up towards south of Greenland. Below average heights at day 10 centred over the UK. Obviously, that is a relatively cool and unsettled scenario at day 10. Then we have 14 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control and the operation run the operation run is the run we're just looking at that have above average heights just to our east and obviously that we're bringing quite warm air from uh, the southeast have 11 members of the uh, east Central ensembles with above average heights over scandinavia we've got a scandinavian high with low pressure out to our west they're turning unsettled maybe a bit thundery and then we have 11 members of the ECM ensembles with a mid-Atlantic ridge and a deep trough of low pressure in over Scandinavia. They're cool, bringing in the winds from the north. So it's almost a 50-50 split between the ECM ensemble members that are quite um, that are going to be quite uh, warm at day 10 still, and the ECM ensemble members that are quite unsettled and cooler at day 10 so therefore we can say that the scenario that we see there that the ecm operation run produced today uh isn't all that well supported by its ensembles although importantly it does have the ecm control run with it in two weeks time these are the options that we've got them there's lots of them <coughs> excuse me this is taking us to the 4th of september 
Uh, 16 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure over top of the country. They're very cool and unsettled. 11 with high pressure to the northeast, low pressure to the southwest. They're warm, but potentially a little bit unsettled. Nine with a trough of low pressure almost over top of the country. They're going to be quite unsettled too. Seven with above average heights out to our west. Four with a deep trough over the top of the country and northern blocking. And another four with a mid-Atlantic ridge and some high pressure over France and some low pressure uh, in between it. Um, so all options are on the table really in two weeks' time. It remains very uncertain where things are going as we get through to the beginning of September. But probably favouring uh, a more unsettled opening week to September perhaps. Finally, just having a look at CFS V2 for the uh, next month. These are 500 millibar height anomalies. They're broken down into weekly periods. The first week period takes from the 20th to the 26th of August. The coming week has above average heights to our east, below average heights out to the west. And uh, we'll be bringing up some pretty warm southerly winds with that. So, uh, going to be plenty of warm weather in the week ahead. And away from the far northwest of Scotland, lots of dry weather too. Week 2 is the 27th of August to the, to the 2nd of September. High pressure around Greenland with a ridge extending through the UK to our east. A reasonable amount of dry and warm weather continuing there through the final days of August. Week 3 is the 3rd to the 9th of September and it's all changed. Northern blocking is over Greenland and low pressure is over the UK and Northern Europe and therefore on the cool side of a jet looking cool and potentially very unsettled through the first week of, of September. And then week four looks like that. It's the 10th to the 16th of September with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south. So we're in a flat sort of westerly flow with that. Uh, probably still quite unsettled, particularly so for northern parts of the country. In the south, it could be starting to turn a little bit drier and maybe a little bit warmer too. Uh, but overall, a bit of a mixed bag. Right, so that's it. So we have firmed up on the chance of very warm conditions for the next week to 10 days uh, for the rest of August. So we start off a little bit cool at the moment, but the trend over the next two or three days is going to be to turn things drier and warmer, increasingly so from the south. Back on the weekend is now looking really good. It looks like we're going to have a classic. We're very warm, potentially even locally hot temperatures over the weekend and a lot of dry and fine weather too. There are question marks about how long this lasts. When is it going to break down? Certainly the early part of next week, Monday, Tuesday, possibly to Wednesday. I think we still keep a lot of dry and warm weather going, even then. Later next week, probably start to turn things a bit more unsettled. By early September, we could find ourselves into a much more autumnal spell of weather. That's a long way out, though. Uh, that's, that's a very long way out and it is unreliable right uh, so that's it for your videos today we'll be back tomorrow with a 5 day forecast it'll be a week to 10 day video update tomorrow as well and also another look at the bank holiday weekend if these charts that we've got today are correct it's going to be a classic bank holiday that's all for now though and thanks for watching